How has your Kentucky Derby favorite been working out ahead of the big race? Stay tuned and find out. Salutations and welcome, friends, to a very special Trust the Prophets episode. We are focused on Kentucky Derby workout reports here as we get closer and closer to the May 6th date for the 149th running of the Kentucky Derby. My name is Matthew DeSantis. You can find me on Twitter at the handle at Fail to Menace. And before we get into the workout reports, make sure to press that subscribe button here on YouTube to make sure to get all of our great content that we have here on Trust the Prophets from Kentucky Derby information, Kentucky Oaks uh, videos, to handicapping information, really deep dive analysis into a number of the big uh, contenders in this weekend's races. So make sure, like I said, press that subscribe button. Make sure to like this video and comment below with what you think of workout reports in general and kind of what your thoughts are on how the major contenders have looked leading up to the big race today. Well, as I mentioned we are going to be diving into the Kentucky Derby workout reports for the main contenders and for everyone, in fact, running in the Kentucky Derby this year. And listen, there is a lot of content around workout reports leading up to big days in racing. I think this is an intriguing dynamic that right ahead of the Breeders' Cup, we get a lot of videos of how horses work out. And right before the Kentucky Derby, we get a lot of videos of how horses work out. That's great. I think if you're somebody who watches works outs, workouts a lot, maybe on XBTV, maybe just you go to the track and you sit there and watch horses work in the morning. I think those people who watch consistently, that's great. For people who are just casual horse racing fans or maybe fans, but they just, you know, maybe pretty hardcore fans, but they don't watch workouts very often. They look at the times of workouts on the past performances, but they might not watch them very often. I feel like this is the time of year where it's kind of silly season. Everybody starts dissecting every little inch and stride and mechanic of every single workout in a way that they would never look at a horse working out, you know, a week ahead of time for the fourth race at a maiden claimer in parks. But for the Kentucky Derby, we dissect these horses right down to the very most minute detail leading up to the big race. And so you get a lot of, I don't want to say misinformation, but I think you just get a lot of misinterpretation sometimes of the information that's being presented. I think sometimes people don't fully understand how to look at a workout. I don't think sometimes people know how these horses normally work out leading up to a big race. And so wanted to use this as an opportunity to talk about, first of all, how these horses have been working, but then also a little bit how to understand the context of these workout videos that inevitably you'll see on social media being shared leading up to the Kentucky Derby. And the nice part was the final round of works took place over the weekend. And what you see here are the 20 Kentucky Derby contenders and the various workouts that they had as their final work before the big race. Now, we should mention that both Japanese entrants Derma Sotogake and Continuar are, are likely to work out again on Wednesday. Now, it might not be an official work, but it's not unusual for Japanese horses to have a little bit more of a rigorous work a few days ahead of the race, whereas most American horses have their final big aggressive work a week before the race. So it's like I said, Japanese just train a little bit differently. So if you start to see reports on Wednesday of Derma or Continuar working out on the Churchill Downs track, it may not even be an official work, but don't be surprised if you see their names pop up in that space. Obviously you saw some horses and trainers taking different tactics with different horses going four furlongs, five furlongs, or in some cases, even six furlongs. So if you look at the four furlong workouts leading up to the Kentucky Derby, you had reincarnate, Tappet Trice, Kings Barn, Sun Thunder, Rays Kane, Forte, and Continue R. All of these horses working four furlongs as their final work before the Kentucky Derby. You'll notice a little asterisk next to reincarnate. Why do I have that there? Because reincarnate worked out at Santa Anita. Tappet Trice, Kings Barn, Sun Thunder, Rays Kane, Forte, Continue R. The rest of those four furlong horses worked out at Churchill Downs. That is, I, I think, an important note to make because tra uh, traditionally Santa Anita workouts look a little bit faster. That track is a little bit faster and it's not unusual to see horses clock much more aggressive 
works out of that Santa Anita dirt than they do at the Churchill Downs dirt. So important to put all of this into context because otherwise reincarnate is running almost two seconds faster in terms of that four furlong than the next closest horse like Tapa Trice. Certainly if you're a Tapa Trice fan, that's a very nice, crisp four furlong work for the Todd Pletcher Colt Kings Barnes. Again, a nice forwardly placed work. Forte, a little bit of a slower work. I wouldn't be that concerned by that. Uh, I, I don't think the four furlong work for continue uh, for Forte is that much of a concern. 49 and four is a little bit on the slower side for a four furlong. But here's the thing. Forte always kind of works a little bit slower. Pletcher horses traditionally work a little bit slower. Again, something again to think about. A lot of times the gallop out after these works is a little bit more aggressive. And so you start to see this is where Pletcher gets the reputation of being a great trainer for the Belmont, a great trainer for stretching horses out. Because even though it might have been an official four furlong work, Forte likely had a pretty aggressive gallop gallop out to six furlongs, seven furlongs, even a mile. So yes, the official work was four furlongs and 49 and four, but it was probably, like I said, followed by, and I don't say probably, it was followed by a little bit more of an aggressive ride out from there. Now, then you saw a slew of horses taking an aggressive five furlong work ahead of the Kentucky Derby. This is the, where the majority of horses ended up uh, landing in terms of the types of works they had leading up to the big race. Again, you'll see two asterisks here, one next to two fills, another next to practical move. Practical move, the other Tim Yachtin horse, of course, out at Santa Anita, two fills, the Larry Ravelli horse training at Hawthorne. He was actually training uh, at a track in uh, there. And so he was also not at Churchill Downs, an important distinction to make in terms of where that work was. He was shipped into Churchill immediately after that work. And he's had some time over that surface just in the mornings galloping around, things like that. So he's getting used to that surface. But two fills worked out with a sprinter actually in that last work at Hawthorne actually worked out with a state bred stakes uh, placed sprinting horse next to him and really out finished. It was very, very visually impressive work uh, for two fills leading up to that. Started a little bit behind, got going, and really then pulled ahead and got his head down at the wire. Very, very nice uh, work for two fills who seems to really be coming into his own. Obviously, some questions about how will he take to the Churchill down surface, but overall, very pleased with how that last effort was. I'm sure Larry Ravelli was very thrilled with that effort as well. The horse that also made a lot of buzz with that final workout was Confidence Game. Coming back with a 59 flat, five furlong work. This is coming off of a minute 36, eight furlong or one mile workout. You never see eight furlong works, or it's very rare to see eight furlong works, especially for dirt horses. And so <clears throat> to see Confidence Game follow up, an eight furlong work with a five furlong work and one is crisp as 59 flat. Certainly eye popping. A lot of people have confidence game now as maybe a dark horse to potentially consider as a win threat in this race. You see a couple of other horses verifying at 59 and two hit show at 59 and three rocket can at 59 and four hit show and rocket can both are horses that have gotten a little bit of acclimation on the track a lot of people are really saying that they've been working out nicely taking to the dirt very nicely moving across the ground very well rocket can of course getting those blinkers put on listen hit show a brad cox horse not surprising to see him train as well as he does uh that's just kind of part of the program quite frankly for cox and his barn then you have disarm coming in in a minute flat Five furlong work. A lot of people talking about how similar Disarm looks to Gunrunner, both in terms of how he runs and how he looks, etc. That's obviously high praise for a horse that has done well, but maybe has not broken through in the way that Steve Asmussen would have wanted. Then you see a couple of other horses there, slightly slower five furlong works. Angel of Empire, 101 and 1, Dermasodagake, 101 and 2, Jace's Road, 101 and 2, and Lord Miles, 102 and 2, uh, the slowest of all those five works. Each one of those horses, I feel like, was trying to get something different out of that work a little bit. Angel of Empire, not surprising to see him work the way he does. Uh, He's not a horse that's going to fire off bullets a lot of times. He's a horse that gets stronger as the race goes on. Uh, he's a horse that, you know, like I said, can certainly fire off bullets, but I think it's interesting that Cox kind of lets him have a little bit of an easier five for a long work ahead of the Kentucky Derby. Uh, Derby Dermosota Gake. Interestingly, a lot of people talked about they were surprised that this was actually listed as a five for a long work. It felt a little bit more like a four for a long work, but 
officially was registered as a five uh, and ran well. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what was unique about Derma Sotogake's five furlong work that day. And then, like I said, Jace's Road, Lord Miles, two horses that I'm not very high on for this particular uh Kentucky Derby. I don't think the Lord Miles work is disqualifying. I think there's other reasons to disqualify Lord Miles, but just gives you a sense of how they're approaching uh, that particular last workout. And then two horses were really aggressive, went six furlongs uh, before going into the Kentucky Derby. Both Skinner for John Sheriffs, who is out at Santa Anita, registers a 114 flat six furlong work. Super impressive. This is a horse that is getting a lot of wise guy buzz. This is a horse that a lot of people are saying might just be that kind of surprise horse just drew into the race. Obviously, very sad circumstances under why that happened with the passage and breakdown of Wild on Ice. But Skinner is going to take advantage of that. Now drawing into the race, training well for John Sheriffs, has shipped into uh, Churchill Downs as well, just like two fills is there now, just as long as Practical Move and Reincarnate are also on the track. And then you have Mage uh, for Gustavo Delgado, uh, working a 116 and four, six furlong work. Interesting that they really stretched him out there. This is a horse, again, very limited foundation. So perhaps it's not that surprising. Only three career races. Getting those horse a little bit more foundation, a little bit more fitness, giving them an aggressive six furlong work. I can see the logic behind what Delgado is doing there, uh, but certainly trying to get him ready for that mile and a quarter distance. Well, those might be all the workouts, but I did want to just spend a little bit of time talking about what are some keys to think about when you're analyzing these works and when you are watching these works potentially, and even just looking at them on the page in the past performances. First of all, you have to understand trainer intent. This is something I mentioned with Todd Pletcher. Todd Pletcher horses rarely fire off bullets. Uh, they typically will give off nice works, very professional works, but they don't leave it on the training track. They save it for the day of the race. And Pletcher also tends to focus on endurance. So whatever that furlong, you know, whatever that workout was, whether it's four furlongs, five furlongs, what have you, they're aggressive about that gallop out. They're really trying to get this horse to get comfortable stretching out to really give that horse a lot of foundation underneath. So no matter what time you see there in terms of the official registered work, rest assured, Pletcher is continuing to push those horses well beyond that four or five furlongs in that particular work. Another thing to keep in mind, Cox horses typically do a strong five furlong work before these races. So all of his horses did a five furlong work. Not surprising. That's what you tend to see out of Brad Cox. So don't read into this one's doing a four furlong. This one's doing a five furlong. His are always going to do those five furlongs typically before a big race. That's just something you see out of his barn regularly. And like I said, he's he's very similar. He's a Midwestern version of Bob Baffert. Listen, his horses are going to clock off impressive looking bullets. They're going to pre- they're going to clock off really impressive works leading up to a race. Now I don't have it down here, but somebody like Steve Asmussen typically actually holds a horse back a little bit in that last work right before a big race. Typically, it's two back. The second to last workout is the really aggressive one that Asmussen has. Things changed a little bit with Disarm because he was coming off that Lexington, but it, so with short turnarounds, so that was a little bit different for him. But again, understanding what trainers are doing. And then finally, Yak Team, much like Bob Baffert, traditional bullets, very strong. We're going to push these horses. We're going to really press them to go pretty strong and and that last workout. So not surprising to see the two yak teen horses clocking very impressive four and five furlong works respectively. Also understanding the track bias Churchill, a little bit deeper, doesn't run quite as fast, obviously as Santa Anita Hawthorne. Interesting. I, you know, Hawthorne's a track that I don't think has a huge bias necessarily, but two fills obviously very comfortable there at Hawthorne. Uh, That's where he typically stays. And so that's where he works. Uh, So therefore, I would expect a horse like two fields to just be a little bit more comfortable at Hawthorne in that setup. Certainly Larry Ravelli, Jareth Loveberry, very comfortable there. Interestingly enough, Jareth Loveberry actually flew into Hawthorne just to work out two fills that morning and then flew back to Keeneland to ride later that day. The other thing to understand is what to watch for in a typical horse workout. So, As I mentioned at the very top, a lot of times we don't watch these workouts. A lot of times, you know, yes, some people will go to XBTV. They will watch these workouts. They will pour over them and, you know, 
the clocker reports, et cetera. And I don't mean to demean anybody who does that or the work that they do to do that. That's tremendous work and it's, it's needed. Uh, and I know a lot of people really, really put a lot of faith in those clocker reports, but watching a video of a horse working out, not having any context doesn't really tell you much. You want to listen to trainer interviews afterwards. You want to try to watch what other horses are doing training. You want to try to see the, how that horse has trained before in terms of, oh, the stride mechanics look a certain way, or that horse finishes pretty strong, or that horse looks a little lazy, things along those lines. You know, last year, there was a horse, Taba. Taba notoriously works terribly, was a very sluggish horse, always had to get pushed, always had to get urged. Taba showed up on a lot of big race days, though. And so that's a horse that, again, if you just watch the workouts, you go, well, I don't know, this horse isn't working out that well. Well, you get them in the race, they run a lot better. Some horses just do not work out well. Some horses are workout warriors. Listen, we just got done with the NFL draft. There are always those players every single year. Listen, I'm a lifelong Philadelphia Eagles fan. The name Mike Mamula is always going to be seared into my memory. Who is Mike Mamula? He was some undersized defensive end from Boston College who went to the combine and put up a whole lot of impressive numbers. He could bench a lot of weight, and he could run really fast in a straight line, and he looked like a million bucks. Put the pads on, he wasn't that good. But in the workout setting, he was fantastic. Listen, horses are the same way. Some horses work out gangbusters in the morning. They don't show up in the afternoons. Other horses, sluggish in the morning, and they're gamers. They show up and run really well in the afternoon. Trainers know this. The jockeys know this. Sometimes if you follow a horse for a while, you can tell that just by looking at the PPs. You know, listen, this horse never really works that great, but look what they do when they come up onto the track. Understanding those dynamics is so critical to understanding the general workout trends. The other thing I'll mention here is the Japanese horses. So, we have no film on Japanese workouts. So when we look at Derma Sotogake and continue our workout, many people are quizzical about, well, geez, this is unusual. They're working out different. They're running different. They, they look awkward on the track. Well, that's part of the way that they train. Okay. They train a little bit differently than North American trainers do. A horse like Derma gets urged a lot towards the end. A lot of people were making a big deal about that, that his exercise jockey was urging him towards the finish line. Typically, you really don't see that happen in America. Well, when you talk to the Japanese handlers, guess what? That's a pretty common practice over in Japan, that they urge horses to the wire. So when you see a horse getting urged like Derma Sotogake, it doesn't mean the horse is out of gas. It doesn't mean the horse doesn't have plenty in. It's to replicate what it's going to be like in a race a little bit. So Again, having that understanding of what to look for so you're not misinterpreting something, okay, uh, I think is a really important piece of context, understanding what every trainer wants out of this. And listen, there is a bit of silly season to this stuff. Every trainer says they got everything they wanted to out of every single workout. Everybody's been training great, et cetera. So there's a lot of misinformation because not everybody's thrilled with the way their horse necessarily worked out. But it's important to just take this stuff in stride and understand that looking at how these horses have worked traditionally leading up to a race. How has that translated into the actual race? Okay. Horses that just deliver bullets and then they run third or fourth on a big day. That's something to keep in mind, as opposed to a horse, perhaps like an angel of empire who is running a one-on-one in change five furlong, but guess what shows up and wins the risen star shows up and wins the Arkansas Derby. Those are horses. I like to bet on that actually show up on the big day. It works are really great to look at. They're very impressive visually, but sometimes they can be a little bit misleading. So just something to keep in mind as you get ready for the 149th running of the Kentucky Derby. All right, well, that's going to do it for me today for this workout report. Make sure to press that like button. Let us know who you think is working out best on the Derby Trail this week before the big race. And make sure to press that subscribe button to get all of our content here on Trust the Province. Until next time, friends, my name is Matthew DeSantis, wishing you a great and profitable day at the races, and reminding you that it's now post time. 